Hey guys, you know, the scriptures say that you do not receive because you do not ask, you know? So we need to ask, 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 keep asking, and then we will get an answer. We need to keep knocking on that door, keep knocking hard, and then, then the door will be open to us. And when we seek him with all of our heart, when we truly seek him with all of our heart, then we will find him, find the answers that we're, that we're asking about. Remember the, the Harpazo event, the catching up of all born-again believers is imminent. Eminent means I-M-M-I-N-E-N-T, eminent. It could happen at any time. It could happen right now while I'm speaking to you, or it could happen six months from now or a year from now. We don't know. But just like the scriptures say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has the the mind of men been able to comprehend the wonderful things that God is doing for those that truly love him. But it continues on. It says, but the Spirit, the Spirit is going to reveal those things to us. And it reveals incrementally during our walk with Christ through the sanctification process because of the indwelling Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead on the third day is the exact same Spirit that lives inside of every born-again believer. It's the new birth, the spiritual birth. That's why... In the book of John, it says you must be born again in, toward, in order to enter the kingdom of God. And you'll know when you have the Spirit because it causes a radical change in your life. And it just you just know, you know? So, um, remember Yeshua was sitting around a campfire. There were broiling fish or something like that. And then it was him and like three other disciples. I forgot which disciple it was, but Yeshua said to one of the disciples, you know, who, who do you say that I am? And then, uh, I forgot what the disciples said. Oh no, the disciple goes, you are, you are, the, you are thou Christ. You are the Son of God, the, the Christ. And Yeshua said, very good, you know. It wasn't flesh and blood that revealed that to you, but it was my Father in the Shamaim, in the heavens, that revealed that to you. That's the Spirit that he's talking about, the same Spirit that dwells inside. Every born-again believer, when, we, when we're justified in the sight of God's eyes, Think of a giant courtroom, right? And God is the judge, right? And our sentence is death because the wages of sin is death. But then in, in walks the attorney who happens to be Jesus Christ. And and he says, no, I, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rescue this one because of the blood that I spilled for him, you know? Because there can be no remission for sins without the shedding of blood. No forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. That's a that's a very strict Jewish law. So, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift from God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So once you're justified in that courtroom and you believe, then you receive the sanctifying spirit, which is not a instantaneous download, no. Because it sanctifies you. It's a sanctification process, right? But... With that being said, he who started a good work in you will see it to completion on that day of Christ Jesus. And so if things are falling apart and you're really downcast because, you know, we live in a very dark world, in a very twisted and sick, um, where people's conscience has literally been seared like a hot iron and they no longer are no good from evil, right? Like I, the prophet Isaiah said, they no longer know right from wrong. Their conscience has literally been seared. They've been given over to a debased or reprobate mind. That's horrible, man. Horrible. God can do that. Just like in the Exodus, he hardened the heart, he hardened the heart of Pharaoh when they were fleeing from him and they were at the Red Sea, you know? It was a Red Sea moment, you know? And all all everyone was lacking faith because and they had just seen <laughs> they had just seen the, the, the angel of death come and kill all the, the firstborn Egyptians. And they seen they, they were released from their bondage, but some of them were still complaining. Why did you take us out here in the wilderness? They were complaining to Moses. Why did you take us out here in the wilderness and let us die? You know, we should have just stayed with the Egyptians and served them. You know, you know that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That's the, that, that's the spirit of Satan, right? He always puts doubts in our head constantly. He's going, kind of, well, that's not going to happen because of this, and that's when we have to go back. And I really wish that. I and myself and many of you would just write down the wonderful things he has done for us in the past, right? But we have to do it as it goes, otherwise we're going to forget. That's the thing that you learn from the Old Testament is that 
the human mind, we forget things all the time. And plus, there is a spiritual war raging for, for our minds right now between evil and good, light and darkness, you know? The battle is raging for our mind. And the reason why most people are lost in this world is because they don't know the enemy. And you have to know that enemy in order to fight the enemy. How do we fight the enemy? On our knees in prayer. Because the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous person availeth much. So, if things are really falling apart, things are going bad, remember, as it is written, it is in our weakness that his strength is absolutely perfected. So, keep looking up. God loves you. He knows your prayers. You know, he listens to your prayers. He will answer your prayers. In the book of Revelation, again, there's a bowl of incense and a bowl of our prayers. It's going to be hurled onto this earth. And it's going to be fire and thunder and crackling and all this stuff, you know, which means there's going to be a lot of ha havoc happening to the unbelievers, all the, pe the evil people that are left in this world. Remember, it was only a few people. It was Noah and his family that were saved. It was only Lot and his and his uh, Lot and his daughters that were saved. That's it. And his wife, because she looked back, because she had one foot in the world and one foot out of the world, you know, she was turned into a pillar of salt. The scriptures tell us no man that look, you know, that has his hands on a plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. That's what exactly, exactly happened to Lot's wife. So stay in his word, watch good and beautiful things, noble things, worthy things, peaceful things, things that are admirable, like the Bible says, that feed your faith, literally. Okay? And, and I love you all. Take care.